All right, so we've now talked a lot about atoms. We know about their electrons, their protons, their neutrons, how to calculate masses, all sorts of things. What we're going to talk about next briefly is what happens when electrons move around. Okay? So we had this thing where we said, hey, there were these different levels, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. And they had different energies, because remember what we had down at the bottom here is we had our positively charged nucleus. And these are negatively charged electrons up here. And they're attracted, right? The negatively charged electron is attracted to the positively charged nucleus. They want to be as close as possible. And that's why we filled up n equals 1, usually before we filled up n equals 2, before we filled up n equals 3. But we're going to talk about what happens when electrons move around. Can electrons move around? Can an electron move from n equals 1 up to n equals 2 if there's space there? Let's say n equals 2 is blank We've got or empty. We've got hydrogen. It's got nothing. And it's just got one electron, n equals 1 and it's moving up to n equals 2. Can we do that? And the answer is yes. But it's not going to do it all by itself, right? Because the electron is really happy down here. It's as close to that positive charge as it can be. It doesn't want to move away from that positive charge. That's not a happy thing. Imagine you've got two magnets. They're really close to each other. What do you have to do to move those two magnets apart, right? You can't just be like, ding, right? Especially if they're strong, it's like, right? it takes a lot of energy. You have to put in a bunch of energy to get those magnets to separate. So just like the magnets, these negatively charged electrons and these positively charged protons want to be near each other. And if you want to separate them, it takes a little bit of work. And we have to put in energy. in order to get that electron to move up. Now, how do we put in energy into an electron? That seems kind of weird. I mean, they're really, really tiny. How do you put in energy to it? And it turns out the way we do that is with light. So we're going to put in some light. And we're going to talk about what kind of light later on. So we're going to put in light. And we're going to let that electron absorb that light, because light is energy. And we're going to let the electron absorb that energy. And if it absorbs just the right of energy, it can move up to n equals 2. And now that electron will be up there. If we give it a little more energy, a little more powerful light, maybe we can get it to jump up to n equals 3. If we give it more powerful light, maybe it can jump up to n equals 4. So right, we're going to put in energy in order to separate out that electron and make it go away from where it wants to be. So the question on this slide is, which takes more energy? Is it going to take more energy to take our electron from n equals 1 up to n equals 2? or more from n equals 1 to n equals 3. Well, if you think about your magnets, if you're pulling them a little bit apart, you need to put a little bit of energy. But the more you pull them apart, the more energy it takes, right? Because even when they're further away, they're still holding on to each other a little bit. So this one is going to take more energy. Does that make sense? All right. So if electrons can go up, from n equals 1 to n equals 2, can they go down from n equals 2 to n equals 1? And the answer is absolutely. In fact, they love to do that. If there's an electron up here at n equals 2, and he sees this wonderful positively charged nucleus down here, he's going to want to be closer. Remember, the only reason electrons went into n equals 2 when we did it is because n equals 1 was already full with two electrons. But if n equals 1 has some space in it, this electron is going to be really happy to jump down there and go down to n equals 1. And well, it's getting closer to that positive charge. In order to move it away, we had to put in energy, right? We had to force it apart. But when we come together, what do we get? We get energy, right? They're, they're accelerating towards one another. Energy comes out. And what happens is how energy comes out is light is given off. And we'll talk about how that is in just a moment. But the atom will actually give off light when an electron falls down from n equals 2 to n equals 1. Now, which will give off more energy, falling from n equals 2 to n equals 1 or from n equals 3 to n equals 1? Right? Imagine falling off a cliff. If you fall off a little cliff, that's a little bit of energy. If you fall off a big cliff, that's a big amount of energy. Same thing here. This one's going to release more energy. because it's a higher cliff. It's falling further down. Just like in order to go from n equals 1 to n equals 3, we had to put in more energy. If we go from n equals 3 to n equals 1, we get more energy back. All righty. So we said we did that in the form of light. So let's talk briefly about light. Now, light, as you think about it, 
is what we can see, right? You can see my brown shirt, my white shirt, you know, all the black color behind me. And those are what we normally think of when we think of light. But when a scientist thinks of light, we're actually thinking of all forms of light. And to a scientist, microwaves are light. Radio waves are light. How does your phone communicate with the cell tower? It uses radio waves. But to a scientist, that's just a different form of light with a different energy than regular light is. So we're going to look at this thing down here called the electromagnetic spectrum, which shows all the different types of light that scientists talk about. We've got radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. And you'll notice they're drawing these little waves over them. They're drawing these little waves that are changing as they go. Well, it turns out the reason they do that is because light is actually a wave. Just think about the ocean, right? When you go down to the ocean, there's these waves. There's this wave that goes up and a wave that goes down, a wave that goes up and a wave that goes down. And they're just kind of rocking back and forth on kind of a gentle day. Right? <clears throat> and if you wanted to, you could go out to the ocean. You could measure the, the distance from one peak of a wave to the next peak of a wave. And we call that the wavelength. So if I continue to draw my little wave here and I measure from one peak to the next peak, this distance here is called the wavelength. The distance from one peak to another. And it turns out we can measure that for light as well. Now, on light, the distances are on very odd scales. For radio waves, if you look at the scale here and you can read it, it says 10 to the 11th nanometers. Now, if you remember, nano is 10 to the minus 9th. So we're talking roughly 100 meters. So if you're looking at a radio wave, the, from peak to peak is 100 meters. Oh, that's a really long distance, right? It's, it's, uh, it's 100 meters, about 100 yards, right? So a football field or so. Now, if you look over here on gamma rays, this number down here is 10 to the minus 3 nanometers. Whoa! Whoa! That's 10 to the minus 12th meters. That's a very, very small amount. And so you can see the wavelength varies for these different types of light. Now, what does that do to the energy of the light? Because if you remember, when we were talking up top, depending on how far the electron moves, we either give more energy in order to make it move further, or we give less energy to make it move less far. How does that relate to my light here and my wavelength? Well, one way to think about it is if you think about kind of waves with a really long wavelength. So imagine that you're uh, looking at some waves that, that just go like this very, very slowly. They've got this kind of long wavelength, right? It's very gentle, right? You're going from one thing to the next thing. And those are what we call like the radio waves, right? Turns out they're moving really fast, but their wavelength's really long, and that's low energy. But imagine that you start making those waves a little closer to each other. So from peak to peak is a little closer and closer and closer. Well, what do I have to do? I have to move my hand a little more faster, right, in order to do that. And so as you move those wavelengths closer together, right, it takes a little bit more energy. Now, as I move them even closer together, it takes a little more energy, right? And then that's a lot of energy. And so when we look back at our electromagnetic spectrum there. Uh-oh. It's not letting me look back at my electromagnetic spectrum. Where's my cursor? Uh-oh. I think I confused it. <laughs> Let's try it again. Uh-oh. I am being locked out of my computer here. Hmm. Where is my cursor? That's funny, folks. I have lost my cursor. Just give me a second here. There's my cursor. So if we go back and look at our electromagnetic spectrum, down here, radio waves, very long wavelengths, very low energy. Gamma rays, very short wavelengths. They're going like this. It's very high energy. And you can kind of think of it like that. It's a good analogy. Right? So if we're trying to do low energy transitions, we're going to use low energy light. And we might use infrared relatively low energy light. What is infrared? Infrared is what you think of as heat, right? If there's something that's hot, 
you can feel the heat just by putting your hand near it, right? You don't have to touch it to feel it. And what's doing is infrared light is coming off and hitting your hand, and you feel that as heat, right? If we want more energy, we might use x-rays, right? You're familiar with x-rays from, you know, x-rays. Those are high energy. You don't want a lot of those in your body because they're very, very high energy. So going from radio waves to microwave to infrared to visible, that's getting higher and higher in energy and shorter and shorter in wavelength because those short wavelengths are very high energy. <clears throat> All right. What about just in the visible part? Well, in the visible part, if you've ever done dark rooms, dark rooms have red light. Why? Because it's really low energy. It doesn't develop the film. So red is the lowest energy light. Blue is the highest energy light, or purple is the highest energy light. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Roy G. Oops, I forgot the Y. Roy G. V. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet for purple. Okay, that's one way to remember it. Lower energy to higher energy. Longer wavelength to shorter wavelength, the visible light. But you can see visible light is only a little tiny, tiny part of what all scientists consider all light of the electromagnetic spectrum. So how does that relate to our electrons up here? So I'm gonna scroll back up, and we talked about that it takes more energy to move further than it does to move closer. So for example, in order to get this guy to move, maybe, I'm just going to make up something. I had to use yellow light. So I used yellow light to get my electron to move up from n equals 1 to n equals 2. Well, what color light would I have to use to go from n equals 1 to n equals 3? We know it's more energy. And if it's more energy, what is that going to be? So for example, would I need red light? Or would I need blue light? Which one's going to be more energy than yellow? Well, if you remember Roy G. Biv, blue is up there on the higher energy scale, and so we're going to need blue light. Now, I just made this up. You don't need to know, like, is it yellow, is it blue, is it red? But you need to know relative, right? You need to know that if yellow light does the small transition, then I need a higher energy light to do a bigger transition, and blue is higher energy. So that's the kind of thing you need to know. Same thing down here. If I'm giving off light, going from n equals 2 to n equals 1, and let's say again this is yellow, then if this require, if, if I get more energy back, this guy it might give off blue light, or green, right, or violet, or even up to ultraviolet. That can be happening as well. Just knowing that there's these relative energies. Okay. So, <coughs> Sorry, my brain was uh, not thinking clearly there for a second. So that's what we're looking at. We are looking at those different energies of light. So what you need to know is you need to be familiar with radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays, that they are in that order in terms of energy. And you need to be familiar with that relationship that the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. All right, thanks so much.